Despite the success of Metroid, along with Castlevania's Cynthia the Knight, the Metroidvania School of Design didn't immediately become an industry norm. The genre and the aughts were largely fulfilled by the two series that make up its name. It wasn't unheard of to see other titles adapt the Metroidvania format. However, two in particular fall closer to home than usual. Between the release of 2003's Castlevania Area of Sorrow for the GBA and 2005's Dawn of Sorrow for the Nintendo DS, Konami Computer Entertainment Japan created two games in this style for the Shaman King license. These games don't hold themselves to the quality standards of Castlevania, yet surprisingly start to solve problems the series had been struggling with for years. Shaman King was a semi-popular anime series in the early 2000s, featuring people who have ghostly companions to help them fight. I never consumed any of it myself, so that's about all you're getting from me regarding this brand. Despite the source material coming from Japan, the Master Spirits series for the Game Boy Advance was only released in Western markets. It has the look and feel of Castlevania right down to the backdash. Even Area of Sorrow's soul system is here, which allows the player to absorb spirits for equipable attacks, buffs, as well as abilities. The general consensus seems to be that this game is likely using Area of Sorrow's engine as a foundation. When exploring a region of undead, it's almost uncanny in its resemblance. Oh, hey, Soma. It's not just a bunch of undead stuck in a castle here. Shaman King Master of Spirits World is completely different in aesthetics and layout. It covers a variety of generic but varied environments such as snowy mountaintops, lava caves, industrial factories, etc. Introducing new backdrops was something Castlevania had been struggling with around 2004. After four games of being locked in Dracula's castle, a lot of the surroundings started to bleed into each other. Welcome to the Clock Tower, again. In Shaman King, the player moves around an overworld map with dots representing each destination. The space between each point is what's actually being traversed here though. Once the series of screens have been cleared, the player is spat out to the dot they selected, where they continue to travel to the next location. When navigating from region to region, there's a sense of momentum that the upward climb to Dracula's throne room doesn't have. The focus on ground level exploration makes for more horizontal level arrangements. Despite the linear nature of moving from one area to the next, it still has a very Castlevania-like feel. All these paths loop around to each other while also having branches blocked off by obstacles that require certain skills to pass. However, the early sections of the game struggle with variety. Most simply feature a lot of running to the right, then occasionally jumping over a series of platforms. It doesn't help that some of the first traversal moves learned aren't particularly exciting. These often act more as keys to lock doors than an improvement of the character's capability. About a third of the way through the game though, the levels as well as the character's movement improve significantly. The ability to dash, slide, and even hook onto rings to swing yourself around are much more exciting. With these skills come increasingly complex areas with gimmicks in addition to multi-floor architecture. The game becomes quite challenging as the main character, Yo, isn't particularly resilient. Carelessness is severely punished, especially since the player must manually save. So save all the time. I definitely had my fair share of losing hours to negligence. All new abilities come in the form of spirits, despite only two buttons being mapped for these actions. In some ways, it's frustrating these skills aren't always accessible through a button combination. Every time you want to slide, the soul for it needs to be equipped. Yet it avoids being too troublesome as there are multiple sets that can be equipped on the fly, something that wouldn't enter the Castlevania franchise until Donna Sorrow a year later. Unlike Soma's set of two, Yo can have up to five. Spirits are the backbone of almost everything here, even more so than the game it's based on. It's the main form of improving Yo due to the lack of a leveling system. That's not to say there are no collectibles outside of them. HP upgrades are spread throughout the environment. Meanwhile, MP increases come from defeating certain bosses. A couple of weapons and armor pieces can also be found, though are exclusively stronger versions of their previous incarnations. Maybe most importantly, pieces of clothing increase the number of stat-enhancing souls that can be equipped at once. Nonetheless, keeping track of where you've looked for these items is a difficult task. Outside of the overworld, no other maps exist. It does show that you've successfully moved from one dot to the next, however the space in between can be complex with many optional routes that lead to treasures or spirits. There's no way to verify where you've been within these areas or what you've collected. Meticulous backtracking is the only real option here, so if you're a completionist, good luck. 
Retracing your steps also becomes a real problem. The map is pretty big, and no matter if the route is already completed, you typically have to rewalk that same old path again. This can create some annoying situations. If you run into a dead end, the only way to go back is through the brutally hard region you just experienced to get there. There's eventually a soul that bounces Yo from one dot to the next, but I at least got it pretty late in the game. The original Master Spirits is a rough release, nevertheless, is impressive in how much it changed from the template it's based off of. The horizontal layout gives a different sense of momentum. Even when Castlevania did implement out of castle exploration, it never attempted to create a cohesive feeling world like Master of Spirits. The sequel is largely more of the same with a lot of reused assets, yet does have significant improvements with a fast travel system as well as collectible melee skills. There's also an upgrade system for exploration based souls which greatly improves their functionality over the original game and allows for even more complex environments. The early level design is also improved. Later areas do ask a bit much of the player given the functionality of some of the souls, like this room filled with hooks. But man, the grapple mechanic is not up for this task. While there's still a lack of a map for tracking collectibles, there's a great quality of life feature where enemies that will drop souls glow blue, which considering there's no leveling system, is much more preferable to monster farming. You could probably easily jump right into Master Spirits 2, although the story is literally that Yo's friends are too busy shopping to help save the world. Like, I get it. It's an anime licensed game, it doesn't really matter, but even the original has some semblance of a plot. Today, the world is full of Metroidvanias, so it's hard to say if Master of Spirits holds much value. However, I think the shared publisher and possible engine with Castlevania, along with how it differs, makes it an interesting curiosity. While short-sighted in some regards, this game shows what Konami was able to do with the format once the restrictions of a castle were lifted. Moreover, it shows the possibility of what new blood in the development team would have added, since it seems like there is little to no overlap between the studio's staffs. It may not be as polished, but Shaman King's familiar yet distinct design is something that veterans of the Castlevania franchise can appreciate. Yeah.